Hello, welcome to mission briefing for mission 2B, training day. So, uh, basically what's going on here is that rebels have uh, gotten wind of a imperial uh, training uh, op, a little uh, training session for uh, young imperial pilots, and uh, they are going to ambush and attack them while they're in the middle of their uh, training exercise here. Uh, and let's talk about what that means for you. Uh, this is actually a pretty uh, simple mission. It is the only mission, I think, here that I was able to fit all the rules onto just one uh, page. So hopefully this is easy for you to follow. Terrain is pretty straightforward. We start with the Imperial player, um, and <clears throat> we're going to place uh, eight obstacles total. So you're going to have debris or asteroids, and uh, we alternate placing, and they are placed at uh, range one or greater, or uh, beyond range one of the table edge and uh, beyond range one of each other, which is kind of a common uh, setup restriction in uh, Grayskull. So let's just uh, populate this board real fast. All right, eight obstacles. <clears throat> okay, uh, as the uh, Imperial player, uh, you get 115 points to spend on your squad, uh, but it does come with uh, a few restrictions. Uh, basically, you need to have uh, at least one unique pilot. Uh, you need to field, field at least one unique pilot if you have one in your roster. Uh, and then the rest of your list uh, has to be filled up with non-unique pilots, generic pilots, uh, unless you run out of them, uh, in which case you can bring more unique pilots. Basically, the idea is that you have one uh, you know, elite pilot training a bunch of, uh, you know, regular pilots. Um, but if you don't, if you, you know, don't have any unique pilots, then, uh, you have to bring, uh, let's see. Yeah. If you, if you don't have, uh, at least one unique pilot, then you can designate one of your non-uniques, one of your generics, as the flight instructor. Otherwise, basically, uh, the unique pilot is a flight instructor, and he's instructing all the regular pilots uh, when the rebels attack. So I've got uh, one TIE Interceptor here, and eight TIE Fighters, and basically as the Imperial player, uh, you deploy uh, all these guys first, and so you can deploy uh, beyond range one of any table edge, and beyond range two of e all your ships. So basically, uh, sort of as if you were just deploying asteroids, you you have to place your ships on the table so that they are at least uh, so that they are beyond range two of each other. So, like, uh, this is actually a little too crowded. Uh, and uh, if you can't manage to actually place your ships beyond range 2 of each other, and it might get hard if you have, like, a ton of TIE Fighters like I, like I do here. Um, if it's not possible, then uh, you can drop that range restriction down to uh, like beyond range uh, one. But I think it should be possible for you to fit. Yeah, if I can do it with eight TIE Fighters and one TIE Interceptor, you probably should be able to fit everyone on the board here. But if you can't for some reason, uh, then drop that rest range restriction down to beyond range one for that last guy. All right. So, Imperial player deploys all of their ships first uh, before the Rebel player deploys their ships. Uh, and 
this is important because that is the uh, chief rebel rebel advantage here. Uh, they don't have a, a ton else going from them in the scenario uh, because they only get 100 points. Uh, they can deploy at uh, within range one of any table edge, and that includes uh, deploying if you want at you know within range one of multiple table edges. So a deployment like this, where I have one X-wing. Uh, on each table edge is uh, is fine. Uh, you know, use your discretion <laughs> whether you think that's a good idea or not. Probably, I wouldn't say that's normally going to be a good idea. Normally, you want to uh, concentrate your forces, whereas the Imperial player is forced to spread out their forces. Because, uh, obviously, as the Rebel player, you really need to leverage your advantage of deployment uh, in order to uh, win in this scenario. Uh, let's see, Rebel player has initiative. Uh, the only special rule in this scenario is the uh, flight instructor, which, uh, which is this TIE, tie interceptor here. Uh, that TIE interceptor has one special ability. Uh, as the flight instructor, uh, once per turn, when an Imperial ship at uh, range one to two, and that also, if you're, if you're playing a scum, then that would that rule would also uh, count you as uh, Imperial. So if you're like a scum player working for the Imperials, then uh, this, this ability works for you too. Uh, anyway, once per turn, when an Imperial ship at range 1 to 2 of the Imperial player's flight instructor is defending, uh, they may reroll one die. So if you have a situation like this, where this TIE fighter is going to get blasted by these three X-Wings, then... Uh, you get uh, one defensive reroll per turn for him, so maybe that keeps him alive. Probably not in that scenario, but you know, you take what you can. Uh, all right, and then uh, other than that, mission is is pretty straightforward. Uh, the end of mission, the end of game, is just uh, when uh, all ships from one side are. Uh, either fled off the table edge or destroyed. And uh, again, uh, sort of a, this is a, a pretty standard rule. Uh, if you flee uh, within the first uh, two turns, so if we have like an, a couple X-Wings here, if I have an X-Wing that flies off the table edge like that, uh, the enemy is going to score points, sort of as, uh, sort of as if they destroyed it. Uh, in fact, exactly as if they destroyed it. They will actually uh, earn points for that. And if you fly one off uh, in the second turn, uh, the Imperial player would also earn points for that. right? And that goes for the Imperial player, too. Uh, otherwise, uh, basically the only way to score points is to destroy an enemy ship. Uh, <clears throat> and it's important to note that uh, in this mission, uh, players score uh, double the point cost of enemy ships that they destroy. So if I, as a rebel player, destroy this uh, TIE fighter here, let's call him an academy pilot, 12 points, the rebel player scores 24 points for killing this TIE fighter. Um, now the Imperial player, alt player also loses points for having their TIE fighter destroyed, and they just they just lose the normal squad point cost. So they lose 12, Rebel player gains 24. So it's pretty pretty big point swing, 36 points for, you know, rinky-dink TIE fighter. Uh, you can imagine if you're, if you're if we're talking about something more expensive, like a, a huge ship, or, you know, large ship, or, uh, you know, TIE defender, elite ship, something like that, uh, you could get, you could get, you know, very, very big point swings. Like, if I had a 30-point ship out here, then uh, killing that would be a 90-point swing. 60 to the Rebels, if it's an Imperial ship, you know. 60 points to the, to the player who destroyed it, 30 points off of the uh, player who owned it. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Uh, main highlights are Imperials have this uh, weird spread-out deployment because they're in the middle of their training exercise. They're not expecting an attack. Uh, rebels 
have a very flexible deployment that can go at any table edge or even multiple table edges. Uh, Imperials have more squad points. Rebels have fewer squad points. Uh, Imperials have this one uh, uh, fairly minor defensive uh, bonus from the flight instructor. Uh, and everyone is scoring double points for killing enemy ships or if those they also scored those double points if uh, a ship flies off in the first two activation phase. So if, you know, if an X-Wing flies off like that in the first turn or second turn, then Imperial player uh, scores double. But again, if you, uh, if you flee after the second turn, after the second activation phase, so if I'm in the third activation phase and I fly off the board, uh, the Imperial player will not score points for that. Uh, so it's, you know, uh, it's uh, very possible that uh, as the Rebel player, you may want to try to blow up one or two uh, Imperial ships and fly off the board. Uh, if you don't think that you can tangle with the rest of the Imperial ships, or as the Imperial player, if you think that um, you're just going to lose this fight because you lost too much early on, uh, fleeing the battle uh, might be a good idea for you. It's all... It's all very, you know, context dependent. Uh, that's a decision you need to make in the moment. But that is uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, good luck.